I had a case called Hamdan versus United States. Who's Hamdan? Mr. Ha Hamdan. So you can't give me an answer on whether a president has to respond to a st subpoena from a court of law? As my, uh, there's, my understanding is that you're asking me to give my view on a potential hypothetical. All right, uh, well, between protesters and uh, they were uh, in, in strong supply today, despite uh, a promised crackdown on the number of protesters who would be allowed in. Of course, they don't necessarily announce where protesters could we come in. But, of course, uh, they had a rollout yesterday where we had better than 70 arrested. I don't know how many were arrested and have been arrested so far today, but it has not been an easy event uh, for Brett Kavanaugh, the president's choice to become the next Supreme Court uh, Justice, uh, let's get a read on how all of this is going. Former law clerk to Justice Anthony Scalia, Ed Whalen. Um, Ed, how do you think it is going? I mean, we knew protests would be there. We knew the, the tough questions, particularly from Democrats and the, and the, the judge's position on, on the, the kind of allowances he gave then. President Bill Clinton had, had some regrets about going too aggressively after uh, Bill Clinton after the fact versus what he might allow, what, what she was getting at for President Trump. But what did you make of all the above? Well, in the broader picture, um, Judge Kavanaugh did great in his testimony um, so far today. He's displayed the intellect, character, and temperament that earned him the American Bar Association's highest, most qualified rating unanimously. And it also has earned him acclaim across the ideological spectrum. I think that uh, everyone who's been watching this has seen um, what, a, what a great selection he is. Is he going to win any Democratic votes by his testimony? Uh, you know, perhaps, perhaps a few, but the key thing is there's, uh, Democrats have not scored any points. And beyond that, um, uh, Judge Kavanaugh has given uh, the Republicans uh, ample reason to continue to support him. So yeah. everything is going great, and, you know, the, we have one, another day and a half of this, and uh, basically be, be done. You know, he, it, it can almost be a curse of having too long and involved a written record, uh, not only on, on case decisions, but his involvement as, you know, an associate counsel in the Bush administration, later on a staff secretary overseeing all the documents that uh, passed through the White House uh, when, when, when Mr. Bush was president. So a lot of people want to get to the bottom of that, how he weighed into a lot of this, even though the number of uh, forms and, and, and material that has been provided to the committee is more than we have given the last five justices to come before a committee uh, combined. But that, well, what do you, what, is that going to be a problem? Oh, it's not going to be a problem at all. Look, um, there, there has never been a, a practice on the part of the Senate to demand everything about a nominee. That's an impossible standard to meet. Um, for example, the, the Senate did not demand Elena Kagan's uh, files from her year as Solicitor General in the Obama administration. No one demanded you know, judicial case files of previous nominees. We have so much uh, to assess um, uh, what, what a Justice Kavanaugh would be like. And indeed, the very Democrats who are uh, making this claim for more records have already made up their minds uh, on him. So um, I, I think um, you know, Republicans uh, understand that they have an ample basis on which to attest um, the qualifications of this outstanding candidate. You know, I, I, I guess there's a big interest in whether any Democrats will vote uh, for the judge. Do you suspect there are Republicans who won't? Uh, no, at this point, it seems that uh, all Republicans uh, appreciate what a great selection this is. I haven't seen any reason to be concerned that one might lose a vote here or there. And if Republicans hold together, I think you'll probably get, uh, you know, some three or so Democrats joining, and you'll have a confirmation by, you know, 54, 46 vote. All right. So, uh, obviously, John Kyle being announced the former senator to fill uh, Senator uh, John McCain's seat. Now, of course, when, when Senator McCain was ailing, there were serious concerns whether he would uh, be able to vote himself if he had survived. Now you have a guaranteed vote in this case uh, for the judge. Does that change the math at all or what Republicans have to do to reach across the aisle to try to pick up a vote or two? Because then you would be at 50 uh, firm 
votes for confirmation, right? Well, the margin now is 51-49 rather than 50-49. to 49. Right. So as a matter of, of simple math, what that means is Republicans could, in theory, um, afford to lose a Republican vote and still have enough votes for Vice President Pence to cast a tie-breaking vote. But we're not going to get to that scenario. I think you're going to see a, a, um, you know, a, a majority. You can see all Republicans hold together and see a handful of Democrats come on board. I just want to be aware of that. So in this process, too, I told that a vice president can't break a tie. And you're saying he can't? Yes. Uh, under the Constitution, the vice president uh, has the tie-breaking vote in, uh, on, on, on all votes. On all votes, uh, including in those for the Supreme Court. Uh, absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. We'll watch very closely.